and welcome to my channel. My name is Autumn Embers and welcome to me building my Spark Golden Age entry. So for this challenge you had to, if you wanted to, you didn't have to take part, but if you wanted to take part you had to create a hobby room for elderly grandparents. I can't remember if it said grandparents but in my mind this challenge is for grandparents. So I just wanted to say I'm sorry I couldn't I couldn't show you the full construction of this round circular roofing thing that I'm doing. It's just basically a glorified bridge. But I had to build this twice. This is the second time of me building this because the very first time I was building this I didn't really have a clue as to what I was building. I knew I wanted to go down the steampunk industrial route because I thought that would suit the story that I have in my mind for this challenge but I don't really have any clue as to what it would look like and so I decided just to build something and just hope and prayed that something came and I really really liked it and it was all oh, a miracle has happened I built something first time round and I had to delete it or anything but that wasn't the case because I kept on building it and building it adding stuff to it hoping and praying what I was building hopefully came together and just created a beautiful magical build and that really didn't happen uh, because about an hour and a half later I was like what is this what am I creating nothing that I'm adding to her nothing what I'm doing to her is it's making it look good it's just it's just a mess and uh, as I was sort of like looking at it I was contemplating should I delete it and just start again part of me was like yes you need to start again this looks absolutely awful but part of me was going no I really don't want to start again because I really don't want to build that circular roofing structure again and so I made a compromise with myself. I said, okay, I don't want to delete the circular structure, but I do want to delete the build. So I delete the build and just deconstruct the circular structure. And when I start recording again, I just put it back together. And I that was the best compromise I could find because I, I wanted to start again but at the same time I really wanted to show you how I built the circular structure because the only place I've seen someone else do the circular structure is the sim stream when she was making her halo build and that is the video that I watched to make the circular structure so if you would like to make it yourself and see how it is all put together then go ahead and watch the sim stream video it's not a tutorial it's just her making the circular structure and making a home within the circular structure I've just used it as a bridge but I thought it would be like a really cool idea to do because I found a picture on Pinterest that I quite liked and it was basically a bridge with a circular a hole in the middle and I was like oh I really like that I, I, I really want to do that actually we can do that I've seen someone do it and I wanted to try it out for myself and it took me a while it took me a while to get there it took a lot of head scratching because I swear she had another level because I think I skipped a level and I was like huh I have four levels but she she has like another extra bit to hers and I think I skipped a bit because I couldn't add it because I didn't have enough height. I had all the height I had and so I was like okay it still looks kind of circular right and uh, so if you would like to see how it is all put together properly by someone who's actually making it from scratch then go ahead and watch the Halo Sim Stream build because that is where I basically did mine and how I learned how to do it by watching her video. So that's how I did that. So apologies for not seeing me how to do it, but it was the best compromise for my but dilemma. So, uh, so I've heard of the Spark golden age challenge on twitter i was like oh this is interesting i would like to take part i don't really make 
homes for elderly people or elderly couples. I, I can't remember if it said or if it specified a have been made for grandparents, but my head just thinks of grandparents when I think of old people. I don't know why, I just do. Uh, so I then thought of what, what I could do. I then also thought of what I uh, thought of like my own experience with grandparents. Unfortunately, when I have to see my grandparents, I do have to go to the graveyard to see them. And so that then started to make me think of uh, like, oh, perhaps these grandparents could be grave diggers, like Jekyll and Hyde. No, not Jekyll and Hyde. He had a split personality. Um, like a broken, nope, no, oh, who are those people? They grave robbed. Oh, I can't remember, but like those people, I can't remember. That happened in the Victorian times. Oh, I can't remember. I can't. Oh, no, anyways. But anyways, I could. I could make some elderly people that could grave rob. They could li live next to like a graveyard. But I wasn't really feeling that idea. I wasn't really imagining as to what the build could look like. Uh, I even asked my mum as to if she was to enter this challenge, what would she do? She then came up with the idea of Coogie Granny, or like a Cougar Granny. I was like, oh, that's interesting, a bit of a kinky, naughty, cheeky Granny. And at the time, I was like, that's a cool idea, actually, but what would her house look like? And then I then came up with the idea perhaps that house could be like a mansion. She would have lots of gold, lots of um, leopard print and there's like animal print all over the place. It would look really kind of tacky looking. Some people may think it's kind of classy, that's fine. But I would see it as tacky. And that would be kind of fun to do because I don't really build in that style. So that would be kind of fun to do. But also at the same time, I was like, hmm. I, I kind of don't feel kind of comfortable with it because I'm not too sure uh, what, what, how other people would see it and so I was like um, let's not let's just stay clear from that it'd be a fun thing to do but I just don't know how I don't feel comfortable and I don't know I don't know how other people would see it so let's just stay clear from that one shall we and just carry on with the darker side because I like the idea of like a darker hobby granny because when you think of old people or grandparents you think a very warm a loving grandparents who is always there for you they always bake like pies and cupcakes and cookies for you they uh, they are always there for you you can talk to them they uh, they like uh, repair your jacket uh, you can say oh i broke this i don't want to tell my mum but i can tell you instead and um, yeah, and so I thought about, you know, what are grandparents, what, what are the general feelings and ideas when you think of grandparents. And it's generally what I've just described to you. And I really like the idea of doing quite the opposite to that. Because by the sound of it, they want they wanted us to think out the side of the box. They wanted us to do something that isn't quite the norm. They didn't want us to make a hobby room for... Uh, knitting uh, or baking or gardening they wanted us to think outside the box and do something a little bit strange a little bit different um, and so oh perhaps they could be cannibals you know because that's complete opposite to what we think grandparents are like cannibals and then I was like okay but why would they be eating other people and so I then thought about oh perhaps they could be making creatures for some reason, I don't know why they'll be making creatures, perhaps they'll be making creatures for some reason though. And then I was like, okay. And then I was like, how, but how does that connect with the cannibalism? I don't, I don't understand. And then I was like, oh, perhaps these creatures are so blimmin' huge and you don't, you don't wanna, you know, get your neighbors suspicious as to why you digging up all these massive holes in your back garden. And so you decide to get rid of these creatures by eating them. But they're so blimmin' big that um, you can't eat them all because 
you end up inviting around about 10 plus people around and then you got to have the excuse why you're doing that and so I thought of the idea perhaps they could eat them and the leftovers that they can't really eat of their creatures could be sold into pies uh, for their neighbours but the neighbours don't know where the neighbours don't know they're eating creatures that they've made but then I asked myself okay but why are granny and granddad or granny and grand granny or just old people in general making creatures why are they doing that they gotta have a purpose as to why they're making monsters i mean they could just woke up one day like hmm i fancy making monsters yes because they can but for i no 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 you need a proper storyline for this and i know there is like a separate um the part of this challenge for like storytellers and so I thought I did as I was making this story up I thought it was a bit weird because I was approaching this challenge from a builder's point of view and yet I was still coming up with a story for this challenge and so I was like oh okay it's fine uh, but anyways I, I then thought, thought to myself okay why are they making creatures and so as I was coming up with a build for this uh, idea of a story for this spark challenge um, I then thought, oh, perhaps they had a child and they had a very hard time in trying to conceive. And so when they found out they were pregnant, they were overjoyed, they were elated and so happy about this news. And the daughter grew up and had some kids of her own. And, but the daughter became ill and so grandma and granddad or whoever who lives here grandma and grandma granny and granddad i don't know whoever lives here invited the daughter back along with the grandkids to live with them so they could look after the daughter um but the grandkids got in the way because before grandma or granddad or whoever lives here whoever old couple lives there before they could find a cure they uh, their daughter their only daughter passed away and they through the through the grief they descended into madness and they decided the reason why they couldn't find a cure in time was because they had to uh, look after the grandkids and if it wasn't for the grandkids they could have found a cure in time and made their only daughter better again and she could still be alive but oh no they had to look after the grandkids and so they uh, blamed the grandkids, put all their grief and pain onto them and they used them in their experiments. And because, because they went from trying to find a cure for their only daughter to trying to create the ultimate being after the, their daughter died because they want to create the ultimate being that doesn't uh, feel pain, that doesn't go, become ill, uh, that doesn't die. And they just went a bit cuckoo crazy through grief. They went a bit cuckoo crazy through grief and tried to make the ultimate being. And they even involved the grandkids in this because they blamed the grandkids. They decided to, to use the grandkids in one of their experiments. And unfortunately, the experiments, the creature that the experiments were used in, the creature didn't really survive. And so... The grandkids, the creature the grandkids were used in, the uh, they kind of ate them. They they ate the creature the grandkids were used in, and uh, so the so did the neighbours. So all these creatures that don't make it, unfortunately, it, with experiments, exper experiments don't always go as you quite hope to, and so some of them die, some of them don't make it. So some of them get chucked into into a pie. And if they can't finish that pie, or um, it could be like a, a, a like a specific baked good. So, for example, if Granny is making a blood orange cupcake, just think twice about that because it may not be a citrus fruit in there. It could be a mushed up uh, creature in there. So that is what Granny does with the leftover or failed experiments. These mannequins in these uh, tubes here. I do uh, put some costumes uh, on these mannequins to represent these creatures of what they could be. So you've got to use your imaginations. You do see them in the screenshot. I couldn't put the mannequins in these costumes right now because at the moment 
I don't have a sim living on this lot and I'm in build bide mode so I had to put the mannequins later on when I was taking the screenshots and so in there we have Yoda he's in there we have well baby Yoda we what's just Yoda I don't know I don't watch Star Trek <gasps> Star Wars I don't watch Star Wars <laughs> I just said Star Trek oh uh, no ever since the Marmite pack came out I keep calling Star Wars Star Trek and I really 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 need to you know think about what I'm saying before I need to say because I keep saying Star Trek when I need to say Star Wars because my my mum has watched Star Wars but she's only seen the like the the older ones uh, with with Princess Leia in it and so but she she's not like the biggest fan she's more of a fan of star trek and also when i was growing up i always got confused between star trek stargate and star wars because they all begin with star but they all end in in a different word and so i always got so confused and i remember my mum asked me if i could uh set the tv to record stargate but in the tv magazine they had Star Trek on as on at the same time on a different channel and I couldn't remember what channel my mum said it was on. So I looked up on the on the T V magazine and was like, Huh? I can't remember what my mum said to me. Did she say Star Trek or Star or Star Wars or Star Gay? I can't remember. I got so confused. So so yeah, we have baby Yoda in there, a Yoda costume in there. We have a weird chicken creature in there. We also have a weird pumpkin creature in there. We also have that weird dog-like mask creature that we got from Get Famous. I'm not quite sure what it is. Kind of looks like a dog to me. So we've got that in there. And they, they are to represent the creatures that uh, the grandparents have made. And these, this is the place where the grandparents keep their creatures. Made sure it is a nice tall wall because these creatures can become quite big. And so we put down a bed in there, we put down a toilet, and it's your basic necessities in there. The top layer here is basically where they do all the jeans splicing and all that jazz. I don't know what I'm talking about, but that's where they do it. I knew I wanted where they do with the gene splicing and where they keep the creatures separate so that is why i made the hobby room into an entirely separate um part and like an entirely separate like building itself so that's why i did it like that um so oh here this is where i make like an, an extra little room for where the creatures get x-rays so we have like a little x-ray room I put the x-ray in its own little room because if you get an x-ray yourself that is also in another little room so I made sure it was in a little room by itself. I also put down some sort of cardio joggy machine. I don't know is that too trying to figure out what the heart is doing. I'm not too entirely sure. I then also put down what kind of looks like an autopsy room or like a surgery room. It's basically if the creature needs some sort of surgery done to it, the surgery and autopsy room is basically the same room they do it in. And so I put that little room in there. I also put down some stains in the autopsy surgery room like oh some, something's wrong on there uh, so i put that down there there is no actually an like, autopsy table that we have in the sims 4 so those benches that i've used here and in the cells i uh, basically just made it bigger and that kind of looked like to me it could be like an autopsy table the only autopsy tables that i've seen have been in the science museum now i went to the science mu museum a month ago now with my mum and a lot of the science museum has not changed since I was little basically the ground floor is exactly the same and but I do not remember there being a medical bit but when me and my mum went there was and since we're there might as well do all of it and my mum at this point really would quite like to gone home by then I was like no let's go and do it uh, most of what was in that room went right over my head uh, but I then found the sort of autopsy pathology part I was like oh that's interesting 
and it told and there was an, a ceramic autopsy table from the Victorian times there was also another autopsy table from I can't remember the medieval times I don't know but it's a wooden one and they had holes in it it has sort also of like a cloth on it that was kind of holy the wood itself was stained there was also a um could have been the Victorian no hang on anyways there was also a a left hand and a left arm that was preserved here I've just put down some swabs and some other bits and pieces you would need for surgicalness um, but also in the museum there was a left hand and a left arm now these left hand and the left arm they were from a person in from the Victorian times I don't know who the person was but the, they were from a person in the Victorian times and it was a preserved waxed arm because the preserve that they used was waxed and I was just looking at this left arm that was preserved by wax and I was like oh that left arm and my left arm look very similar because the left waxed arm the preserved one it looked very similar and it was very like skinny and scrawny and kind of bony and stuff like that and I was just looking at my one like oh wow they're very similar that's so creepy that's so similar and just kept looking at it it's just like wow okay because I have very skinny bony hands and just like a general skinny bony body and so yeah I was very fascinated by this preserved wax injected hand or arm the hand itself was a bit manky looking the preserved arm was in better shape and that was the bit I was mainly looking at it's like wow that's so similar in such a creepy way <laughs> so um i when i was doing this i spent i do spend a lot of time in this area because i have never ever done anything like this before i've never made a mad scientist lair ever before and i had to have a, a lot of help from pinterest i was I was heavily leaning on Pinterest to help me out here and I didn't know there was just so many different kind of punk styles because we have steampunk, we have cyberpunk, we have biopunk which is what I think this was perfect for. I thought the biopunk was perfect for this kind of mad scientist look that I was going for and there was a biopunk picture that I found that I quite liked and there was something in the middle of the room and now the best way I can describe what was in the middle of this room from this picture was if you've seen Doctor Who, Doctor the Doctor has a TARDIS and as you go inside the TARDIS there is this middle massive part that basically makes the TARDIS go and that's what it kind of reminded me of and I really liked it and I was like oh I should have something like that in the middle of my room and so I basically made it because there wasn't there's nothing in the game that that kind of looks like the middle part of the TARDIS so I made it myself I made it out of those watery tubey compression I don't know what they are things and lots of pipes I also used the uh, strangerville lights at UFO light there. I also used a x-ray machine, more bits and bobs and a thingamajig from Strangerville that I'm just finding now because I thought that was perfect. I, when I was taking the screenshots I didn't realise how long that big pointy bit was and how far up it goes up into the building but it's quite high. So at one end of the building um, of this of uh, this um, level of this building we uh, have the where they do the jeans slicing at the other end we have the kitchen now this is the kitchen where they basically chop up all the creatures that don't really make it and um, have them for dinner and if they can't finish what they've had they just pop it into a pie pop it into a cupcake in that cupcake machine there and they sell it to their unsuspecting neighbours who just think they have a quirky, unusual uh, set of old people living near them who went through a tragic, awful time and ha has now transformed their home into something unusual because in my mind, the house itself 
was once a house to admire and kind of be jealous over. It was like, oh, I really, really want to live in that house, but unfortunately it's too expensive. And it was a very beautiful home. But when the daughter died, that all kind of like faded away. They really couldn't care for the house at all because they were too obsessed about uh, this building here and uh, creating the ultimate being. And so the house itself just went into like disappear and got really old, got really dusty, uh, got lots of cracks in it. And they just couldn't care less about the house. And through grief, they also just, you know, collected stuff through time and just chucked it on the, on the house. Uh, so this room here is where they basically remember their daughter. The little statue is supposed to be representing their daughter when the daughter was a kid. And this is the room where they basically just sit down and reflect on what they're doing. Kind of, kind of like um, not losing sight as to why they're doing this. Remember why they're doing it. And just to remember their daughter. Remember the good times. And just basically sit here, get some reflection time, get some hope back and to carry on, keep calm and carry on create, creating these weird, wonderful creatures and trying to find the ultimate being that doesn't die, that doesn't feel pain, that, that doesn't get ill or whatsoever. So this is where they come to uh, reflect and to remind themselves as to why they're doing it. So I made sure it was very um, pretty looking, lots of candles. So this is where they'll go light a candle. They go and replace every flower that they put down. So all those flowers in those um, vases there, they go replace them. They make sure that place is looking immaculate and tidy. The rest of the house that that can just go that would go down the pan. But that that part of the house, that's the part they like to you know be proud of. That's the part of the house where they they keep nice and clean. So this is, is where they sell off their baked goods to their unsuspecting neighbours. I wanted to make this part of the garden very pretty, very soft and very full, like, like welcoming and inviting because the rest of the garden is kind of like overgrown, kind of swampy-esque. That was the look I was trying to go for. But this part here, I wanted to make very inviting, very warm, very kind of friendly looking. Oh, it's okay. It's just our ugly neighbours baking, doing a little bit of a bake sale. It's okay. It's fine. Let's go and say hi and buy one of their baked goods. So I wanted to make as friendly looking as possible. Um... So you may see some green rocks by the stairs. I do, I did have to go like get rid of them. That's because uh, when I was play testing this, my sim couldn't actually get up and into the build itself. And so I had to get rid of the green rocks I had laying down there. I had a funny feeling that I had to do that. And then I had another glitch. So I actually had two massive glitches with this build. The first glitch was the upstairs to the main part of this house, which is the part I'm doing now. So where a grandpa, so where the grandparents have the bedroom and where the daughter had her bedroom. So where the, that part is, I had a massive glitch. And that glitch was that my flooring it kept disappearing every time my mouse hovered over the floor it stayed once my mouse moved away from the floor as to where it should be it disappeared and i couldn't build any layer whatsoever because the game didn't recognize there was flooring there and so it recognized there was rooms there but it didn't recognize there was flooring there so it's like okay um I don't know what to do and I have read that a building on a 64 by 64 lot can come with glitches especially if you've got like glass roof and I really really didn't want to take away the glass roof because I felt the glass roof adds so much to the steampunk vibe that I was going for and so I really really don't want to take that away so I was like what do I do? I then looked it up on YouTube, watched a YouTube uh, video and this YouTube video was from some time ago. This glitch has been happening for so long. I don't understand why it's still in the game. But I watched a video and she came up with lots of like different, re different reasons as to why you may be having this glitchy floor thing happening to you. 
I will link the video down below just in case you may be having the same problem that I was having and um, one of the reasons could be because the, the game doesn't understand that it is a room but my game I could see my game was understanding why I, what I had was a room so I was like okay that's not the problem and so the other re reason as to why you could be having a glitchy floor is because uh, all you need, really need to do is put down some floor tiles. It may take a while to uh, for your game to recognise you're trying to put down some floor tiles. But uh, there will be a spot somewhere where you can put down some floor tiles and that's it. That's why I... And that was my problem so all i had to do was put some floor tiles down the other glitch i was having was the stairs the stairs to actually get inside of this house here and i don't know what was the problem i have absolutely no idea i i even even deleted and flattened out the terrain just to see if i've accidentally put un something underneath the terrain that i can no longer see but no nothing was there it was like huh why why what 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 on earth is stopping you from walking up a set of stairs? I have no idea. I even placed them without BB dot move objects. She still couldn't even walk up the stairs, so I had to put in a bridge in. I really, really didn't want to put a bridge in because I thought a bridge would be very distracting and would be a little bit too much for this build. But it was the only solution I could find because she would not walk up those stairs and if she couldn't walk up those stairs she couldn't enter into this build let alone the mad scientist bear so it's like okay bridget is then fine whatever so this is the kitchen dining room like i said this house was once a house to be jealous over this was a house to admire uh, but they really don't spend most much time in this house really they really just use it to go to the loo, bathe themselves and basically go to bed in. They spend most of the time in the evil lair part. And so I wanted to make sure the house itself looked kind of dated, looked kind of old. It, could, it looks quite nice but it could have a bit of a revamp to bring it up to the now and here and today. But um... So I made sure I made sure I did that. This room here. So when I was doing this room, at this very moment in time, I had no idea as to what age the daughter was. Um, so I just did it in a teenager kind of room. And this room here basically stayed the same. The, the grandparents who live here, they're not going to change it because this is sort of another kind of memorial for their daughter they're going to leave it in the same state that she left it when she first left it and this is basically where the daughter died and so they're not going to touch it they're going to leave it alone this is the only room in the house that's going to look like it has been cleaned it has been tidied but wherever like she put her bag that is that is where they're going to leave it because they, they don't want to touch anything they want to sort of like Leave it in like a time capsule, leave it frozen in time. They don't want to touch anything to do with this room. They just want to make sure it is clean, it is tidy, it is looking immaculate. Unlike the rest of the house. The rest of the house looks a bit tired. It has lots of cracks in it, it has lots of cobwebs all over it. But this room here, they're going to keep it as tidy as they can possibly can. So, there, so the kid's bedroom, basically the young daughter's bedroom, looks very kind of modern and that's the way they're gonna leave it so moving on to the grandparents bedroom i had no idea as to what this was gonna look like i i wanted to use this bed but i i wasn't i've i don't really know how to decorate the bedroom using this bed with that color swatch i just don't know how to do it and if I do know how to do it, I kind of think, but I've already done that before and I would like to do something different. So I just got rid of the bed altogether and just to do something a little bit different, use a wallpaper I've never used, use a bed that I've always wanted to use but never really have done. So I used the Discover University bed. I think I have used this bed or have tried to use this bed but really haven't done it yet. 
just changed up the floorboards just because I felt like the pattern flooring with the pattern wallpaper was a little bit too much so I got rid of that and went for the parquet flooring. I love parquet flooring, it can look classy, it can look dated. I just think it's very I just think it's very sort of like a I don't know, all rounded, well used, you can use it anywhere and it still look great kind of thing. This is where the grand grandkids used to sleep because they're now pie. Um but I just basically put the basics in here and made it look very run down. So this is where I'm gonna leave you. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and please enjoy the rest of your day wherever that may be and uh, I'll see you soon. So thank you and bye.